I'm just gonna go out here and say it. I liked Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's an amazing, greatly made game. That's just not the case. But what I am gonna tell you is that I had such a good time playing this video game. Normally I try my best not to spoil anything, but the nature of the campaign requires me to talk about it, so. Anybody else remember? Alright, so it's no secret that people, uh, didn't really like the reveal of Infinite Warfare. This game came out during the time where the fan base collectively wanted to go back. But you know, instead of going back in time with boots on the ground and all that good stuff, they yeeted that mess even further. They added 3D movement where you could go just about anywhere you would like on the screen. But apparently, somebody didn't send the memo to the level department because it's actually really hard to get where you want to go in this game. Unlike Titanfall over here that has all these sick, cool, curvy... This is where I would add Titanfall 2 gameplay. If I had it, fix your server's respawn, please, bro! This campaign here is one of the best I have played in Call of Duty. There's some absolutely stellar moments in this game with beautiful characters and great connection. But to be 100% real with you, the story here isn't that great. For example, the villain here, uh, I already forgot his name, is just straight evil for no reason. Other than propaganda, there isn't really a reason why he's so evil. Like, dude, check out the prologue mission, right? Very first introduction to this dude. And look at him. What does he do? He shoots his own dude? What did he do? The poor sap? My man had a family! Our survivors will live at gunpoint and breathe by permission of the front, Mars, and Turk. We get it! He's evil! But guess what? It's an underdog resistance story and you know your boys about it. This is easily one of the best COD campaigns out there. There's some great moments, but the thing that shines the most are the characters. The protag this time around is Nick Reyes, a newly appointed captain of the ship Retribution. You follow his journey on learning what it means to be a leader and actually getting the mission done. As far as COD protags go, honestly, I think he's kind of mid tier. He's pretty good, he does his job. But that's about it. Second in command here is Nora Salter, a gun ho super soldier that is always ride or die for the homies. She's cool and she fits her role incredibly well. Along with these two, this easily has the best supporting cast in any COD campaign. We have Gator here, who is the navigational officer of the Retribution, and he is cool in his sort of like nerdy geeky type of way, man. It's so sick. Then we got the gentleman of the Marine Squad. We have Sergeant Omar, leader of the Marines, and sort of a teacher to Reyes. For some reason, he has his colored pistol. It, it's never mentioned or ever brought up. It's literally just there. Oh, and we got our boys Brooks and Kushima, who are the dynamic duo. And man, Cash, he has a mad crush on Salter, dude. It's mad adorable. You know, available. Is that Marine, sir? These two are kind of like the comedic relief a little bit. Not too much. It's a Call of Duty. They're not going to be cracking jokes left, right, and center, but they do do their job. All of these characters create a great supporting cast, but none of these characters compared to my boy. This guy is my jam, bro. He's an experimental robot that has an incredibly high intelligence and a kind hearted soul. We're good. E3N here also boasts the title of being one half of the greatest scene in this video game, hands down. If you've played it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm scared, sir. Me too. As an avid fan of Call of Duty Zombies, this one honestly has to be the most underrated one. At this point in time, people start to realize like, hey, it might not be fun to run around and shoot bots for like three hours at a time. So the developers made it a lot more obvious as to what's actually happening in the story and what you could do to affect it. For example, in every stage you get the stylized pause menu with empty slots to end all of the things that you're gonna need to fill them up to continue the story. Now don't get me wrong, some of these are irrelevant, but others you would need for reasons unbeknownst to me because I was always the point farmer in my team and I had this guy oh, doing all the big brain work for me. But you can't say I didn't do my job. I always had the stonks for the boys. Fun fact about this guy. We bought this game to play together and at the time I was so into steelbooks. They knew me as the steelbook guy at my local GameStop. And this guy walked up to me and told me, what if I spend 110 bone just to have a steelbook that you don't own? And I was like, you ain't about it. I said you ain't about it. He wasn't about it. No way he was about it. So he goes off to, he goes off to do his own thing and then I see him checking the funds on his phone to see if this was economically viable for him and guess what he bought it and i was slightly fronted it did hurt at the time a little bit or so i thought bro i walked up with my little plastic copy placed it on the table and was like hey ian 
Do you have like a pre-owned version of a steelbook anywhere? Spoiler alert, he did! And I was the one that ended up with a dub! $13 steelbook, baby, let's go! Alright, this is the part of the video where I would have talked about the Easter eggs. If I had finished any, yo, me and the crew were trying for three hours, but we got folded back savage by these funny looking ET guys. We were so depressed, and you could just hear the discouragement and just the defeat in our voice, man. All right, down. Uh, Alright, GG, bro. So unfortunate. Rough. Three hours and 30 minutes for nothing. Down the drain. Oh, God. that's hard. That's hard, dude. Call of Duty isn't that deep. After getting a game every year, there's only so much you can innovate before it just becomes a cycle. But I would be lying if I said that I don't have fond memories of playing Call of Duty. Either as a kid getting out of school and going to a friend's place to play some Black Ops Zombies, <clears throat> maybe even hitting up some private lobbies, playing some Myers, or even as an adult, dude, staying up super late even though you have work the next day just to get that one more game in. Call of Duty means something to a lot of gamers. Nowadays, it's all over the place, but if you get a group of homies, get into a party, turn off your brain for a bit, and hit up some TDM, you're gonna have a good time. Trust me.